This is Warren Vanderhill interviewing Kathy Kyle, uh, Emeritus Assistant Professor of Computer Science for the Ball State History Project. The date is November 2nd, 2004, Election Day, a day of destiny. Don't, don't put that in the typescript. Um, Kathy, thanks so much for agreeing to help me with my project. Um, and I'd like to ask if you'd begin by telling me a little bit about your background, uh, both your educational background, where you're from, and essentially get me from wherever to your decision to come to Muncie, Indiana. Okay, well that's really easy because I came here in the second grade. <laughs> okay. So I, my parents moved to Muncie, right? Okay. <clears throat> and we went. I went to Burris, and I really I loved Burris, and Dr. Howard. Uh, those people, those were just okay. really wonderful people. Uh, so when it came time to go to college, my mother was for me going to uh, Ball State because she had been a teacher and she wanted, and I wanted to be a teacher, so she thought that would be great. Uh, but I went to St. Mary's up at Notre Dame, oh. uh, and when I graduated from there, uh, I went over to Notre Dame for a master's. I had taken one class in education at St. Mary's, mm -hmm. and it was not a good experience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that soured you on that. Yeah, right. Okay. The man read the book to us oh, every okay. day. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. said, this is not good. So when I graduated, Notre Dame was offering a Master's of Arts in Teaching, and they paired up two people. One person who had already taken their educational requirements and wanted to get more in their subject field, and one person who had done a full undergraduate degree and now wanted to go on into right. teaching. So the person who already had their education did, went out, we had a teaching position, and they went out and filled that teaching position the first semester. In the meantime, I was taking my educational courses okay. and some further courses in mathematics. Right. Then we switched. And that person came back and okay. I went what, what, what was your undergraduate major? In math. Okay. So now you're at the point where you're doing an MAT, which was very popular at that time. Right. Uh, to get people involved in teaching, get them a teaching credential. Right. Okay. Right. So um, then I went off and got married and, you know, uh, and that, does this have to go in? <laughs> Oh, well, this we, is just personal yeah, how I got okay. back here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, I could just say my dad died right. and I came, my marriage was falling apart. Okay. I had two children. I came home and I stayed home. Okay. So now you're back in Muncie. So now I'm back in Muncie. Yeah. And um, I did some substitute teaching. Oh, okay. And one day I walked over to the math department and I said, uh, you don't need anybody to teach for you, do you? <laughs> and Earl McKinney said, well, fill out these papers. <laughs> and I yeah. started to, in the fall. Do you recall what date that was? At, when I started yeah, school? Yeah. Well, I, no, it started, started at Ball State. So I started at Ball State in 68. Oh, okay. okay. The fall so you are now a member of the contract faculty. Right. Okay. And, 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 and Well, either now or later, I want you to talk a little bit about how you saw the role of a contract faculty member. Um, and, and you can figure, you can paste this all sure, together right sure. later. <clears throat> so the way that worked for me yeah. was I was just happy to have a job at right. that point. I had these two right. kids to support. Yeah. Um, but at that time we were on the, the schedule. Quarter system. When did you come here? I came here in the late 1960s. Yeah. Um, so there was this, um, the pay schedule. You know what? I haven't got the right word for it. It was a grid, a fixed, the grid. fixed salary schedule. Yes, the yeah. fixed salary schedule. Yeah. So I started out as an instructor. Then I could see if you had two masters, yeah, you right. could move up. Right. So then I moved. I would stay. <laughs> I taught all day. I went to school at night yeah. and got that second master's. And first I went from an instructor to a, a temporary instructor right. to a permanent instructor. Yeah. And th I didn't think that sounded very good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Permanent. What, what was your second master's in? Computer science. Okay. So you went. So now you have two master's degrees. 
and you I went can for, move up. Yeah, on the salary schedule. On the salary schedule. And so you moved to assistant professor? Right. Okay, which obviously gave you more money. Right. Yeah. But you're still a contract faculty member. No, not at that point. Ah, See, I became okay. a permanent instructor. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And then after that, I moved up to um, whatever, associate assistant. Okay. So were you on, was that a tenure line appointment? And that was a tenure oh, okay. line appointment. Okay. And the way they wrote up my contract, although I don't know that I ever saw it, mm -hmm. was that I would never ask to be promoted. Really? I mean, that, that was just kind of a verbal understanding? No, I think oh. it's written. Oh, okay. okay. Someplace back there oh. yeah. in like 72 yeah. or 3. So you can, you can be tenured, but you're going to be an assistant professor forever. Right. Oh, okay. Did that bother you at that no. time? No. Oh, okay. I was so happy. I had yeah. a job. I had something I loved to do, yeah. and I could support my family. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I understand that it could bother yeah. other people, and people used to try to get me to be bothered about it, mm -hmm. but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Was your teaching load the same as the people who were in line to become associate professors and full yeah. professors? Okay, once, I became, once I moved from yeah. temporary to permanent. Okay. Okay, so you had all the rights and privileges there on two pertaining. Right. Except right. that you weren't eligible by this understanding to be a candidate for promotion to associate right. professor or right. full professor. Okay. Did that mean that you had the same requirements as far as what eventually we began to call here scholarly productivity? I never took it that it did. Okay. I said to myself, and you know, who, who else is to tell me what it means? Because I'm pretty sure they just made this up. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't think this was written in any of the handbooks. Yeah. I just took it to me, no, I don't. I'm never going to be promoted, so I don't. I need to teach my classes. I need to stay up with what I'm doing. I need to go to professional uh, meetings. Right. But I don't have to produce uh, scholarly. Okay. Well, this is more for the official record, but I, I've got to get this in here. So, um, in, in the classic parlance of people who come here as academic couples, that really isn't what you were then. No, because uh, Stan didn't come. I came in 68. He yeah. came in 73. Yeah. So the, the notion of trailing spouse does not apply mm -mm. in the case mm -mm. of the Kyle. Okay. He's, he's the trailer. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. He arrives here and then you meet and get married. That's right. Well, what, what, can you tell me a bit about that? When did that happen? Um, so that year that he came, yeah. um, oh, does your mind go blank? <laughs> J.B. Black. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. J.B., yeah. um, how was that? Okay. Oh, no. So. Uh, we went to, we're going to have a math meeting, and uh, so we came to the math meeting, and in the afternoon I saw this strange looking person in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. He was all scringy, and he didn't look like he belonged at an academic meeting. That's because he's a Berkeley guy. <laughs> Right. So, in the coffee and tea part, I went over to this person because I had it in my mind. A person, this person is not here. He's really here for the um, intellectual content. He's not here to impress anyone. This is a Saturday. And uh, so he said, no, I've been out bicycling. But, and somebody told me this was a mathematical uh, econ right, idea, yeah, yeah. so I came. So that guy, that was our introduction. And then we were both teaching on the same floor in the evening. Mm -hmm. So my break, uh, I walked down there. So. His break. <laughs> Who was this greenie from Berkeley? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he, we went to some, we had a date, uh -huh. and J.B. really encouraged him, uh -huh. I'm sure. Uh -huh. So J.B. Black is the great matchmaker in all this. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful, yeah. wonderful to hear. <laughs> so you were married. Yes. Uh, I mean, I'm going to ask what year. I hope you remember. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, what year? Yeah. 76. Okay. So from 76 on until your retirement a year ago, you are a faculty couple. Right. Okay. Um, in, in what major ways do you think, from your perspective, Ball State changed during your career in Math and computer science. Well, so I'm sure, you know, how I was hired, we yeah. would never yeah. hire a person. Yeah. 
right. at that position right. anymore, and we would not make this full accommodation. Yeah. Although I think there is a place, I see in my department, mm -hmm. there is a place for people who want to teach. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And we could, we I think there is a possibility we would be well to look at that kind of an idea yeah. of having huh. of encouraging people who mm -hmm. that's their idea that mm -hmm. they want to teach even though that's not what your department and indeed other departments have been doing of late no no i'm saying it's yeah. not at all but i can see that there is a spot for that well i suppose we do that when we hire instructors yeah that's really yeah. Where, what they're yeah. Yeah. but it's also good, I mean, it has been good for me to have a permanent position. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I can recall some other faculty who, perhaps not quite in the way that you ended up getting tenure, but they did too. I mean, there, as you recall, and you mentioned on this old salary uh, grid that we had, there was something called special assistant professor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, as I reflect back on looking at that salary grid when I came here in the late 1960s, I, I do recall that there was a place for that. Uh, on the other point, I think what you're talking about is perhaps having dual tracks where you'd have some faculty who really were involved in the teacher-scholar definition and are required to publish their work, apply for grants, etc. And then there'd be people who would be on another track where their assignment would really be much more in the classroom, much more teaching-oriented. I mean, a number, number of universities have tried that. Right. We've never really tried it here. It's probably mm -hmm. an idea they ought to discuss. It, well, I think it would be worth a discussion. And then I don't know, one of the questions you asked me is, did I feel yeah. um, less right. in some way? Uh, in some way, of course, I know I have that knowledge. Right. But I never really took that to heart or acted that part out in my life. I just said, no, I'm a regular person, and here I go. Okay. Um, but I can see if you really had these two tracks, right. it might end up that some yeah. people yeah. were categorized yeah. as yeah. lesser people. Well, there's always a risk you're going to get some people that are going to be second-class citizens right. as far as that's concerned. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the major changes that you've lived through that I'd like to have you talk about is the computer science becoming its own department. And I, I'd like you to reflect back on the on the history of that and how you saw that unfolding at Ball State. I certainly wish we had Clinton here. Ah. You know, because <laughs> he was... For the tape, that's Clinton Filling, F-U-E-L-L-I-N-G, who sadly passed away a few years ago. And he was the chair of the math department. Right. And, oh, I'm... It may come to me more some right. ideas about why we decided or felt like it was necessary to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but we were going to move to a new building, right. Right. so there was going to be the opportunity mm -hmm. to break apart. I mean, there's mm -hmm. going to be space mm -hmm. right. to have two offices. Um, and there might have been some feeling of, well, we're different than you. Computer science is different than mathematics. Mm -hmm. And the people who are hired to teach computer science um, might have even felt they were more financially worthy. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's Oh, I think they did. For yeah. certain. They, they wanted to command higher salaries than the average math guy. Right. And by that I mean male or female. Right. Yeah. Uh, I kind of think that was... Uh, some part of it, but I don't really think Clinton, I don't think that was his motivating factor. I mean, I didn't have that feeling working up with him, mm -hmm. but I do think that was a factor, okay. and so I'm glad you said yeah. you confirmed that, you could yeah. have thought that too. Well, did, did you think it was a good idea when it happened? Um, well, yes, because then you were going to see, that computer science was then going to be visible. I mean, that's what happens right. when a new department right. is created. Right. Then people right. can see it. Yeah. So a student coming to Ball State can now see computer science right up there right. as a department. Yeah, like my son. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than have yeah. to search for it. Yeah. Well, let me go at that a little bit differently because one of the opportunities that I, when I was provost, offered computer science was to cast its lot with the new College of Communication, Information, and Media rather than for mm -hmm. computer science to stay mm -hmm. with sciences and humanities. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you have any thoughts on that? I mean, you think that computer science did the right thing by staying with science and humanities, or should they have gone with the big new toy? Well, I know uh, Clinton came and presented that, and I really think he thought that was a good idea. Mm -hmm. But the department, right. that discussion... Um, they didn't think it was a good idea. <laughs> no, we're science. Yeah, we, right. we belong with the sciences. Yeah. Um, and... I don't know how that works, mm -hmm. but that they really felt like when they wanted to keep that connection with the science mm -hmm. and the mathematics, and probably a big issue in that is most of the computer people came out of mathematics. Yeah, I think that's a very important point. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that faculty is offered the same choice 15 today. years from now. Yeah. Well, you say today, well, maybe even today, but I was going to say, yeah, oh, when a few see, more. Yeah, when you get a few more people who really come out of a computer science right. background, they may see more advantages to being in a smaller college right. than being in the, the big monster, uh -huh. which is science and humanities. Right. Yeah, I know Clint and I talked about that, and I think you're right. I think Clint saw some advantages on both sides, but he'd come out of a math background, and he just came to me and said he didn't feel the faculty were ready they, uh, they were. to make that change because most of them had come out of a math background, mm -hmm. as indeed he had, mm -hmm. but you know, maybe by the time, time someone reads this transcript and listens to this tape, <laughs> the computer science department will be someplace else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there other changes that occurred at Ball State that might have had some impact on you? I mean, I think, for example, to suggest one, did the change from quarters to semesters have any impact at all on you as a faculty member? Because that's one of the big things that we did. I, I like quarters better. <laughs> okay, why? <laughs> well, I thought the students didn't get so tired of me. Oh, okay. I didn't get as tired of them. <laughs> when we got in there, we got to work. Mm -hmm. uh, the bad thing about quarters, the way we did it, yeah. was that split over Christmas. Yeah. Right. My children that are doing uh, Ben's out at UCLA, mm -hmm. and they don't start till October yeah, right. yeah. and get that first quarter over, and then yeah. they do two quarters yeah. after Christmas. Yeah, those are what, that's called late quarters. <laughs> late quarters. Oh, uh, I, of course, I tease it myself. Oh, you, you've got, you aren't even working. What do you think, what do you think one, you're one doing? One time you're going to Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get, get to work. But, um, and so that was, that was a disadvantage in quarters, to have that break in the middle of the spring, the middle quarter. But I thought we got our work done, and you were more focused I understand people who who say, well, we need that time to develop like a term paper. Yeah, right. But we don't do term papers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But we do sometimes yeah. do a pretty big computer yeah. project. Right. And maybe uh -huh. uh, that's better to have. Okay. So as you reflect back, did it, did it really make a lot of difference in your life, or did you just kind of adjust to it and say, I'll go with the flow? Right. And that's the way it is. I mean, right. it wasn't really a burning issue. Ooh. No. Okay. Well, that's that's what I get from most people, but the important thing is that the two of us are part of this group of faculty who at Ball State experience these changes, and I find that a lot of them, when the change was taking place, hated it, and now, lo, these many years later, when they've gotten used to being on semester, it doesn't seem like any big deal, but I'll That's tell you right. it was a big deal when it was happening. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Because you had to rethink every yeah, single thing. Yeah. <laughs> are there ways in which you feel in your long distinguished career here, that Ball State stayed the same? That it was pretty much, you know, I came here in the 1960s and I left a year ago and retired, and you know, gee, this didn't really change all that much. The way it didn't change is there's still, at least within my department, a nice friendly feeling. Okay. So that part has remained the same. Okay. But of course, if you look through the campus, I mean, it's yeah. very, very oh, different. Oh, yeah, the physical campuses. And we've got yeah. so much more going on. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And I think people think of themselves in a different way. When I oh, came, okay. we kind of thought of ourselves as a little place that was just uh -huh. making a footprint. Okay. You came at that same time, didn't you? Yeah, late didn't, 60, sure. Yeah. Wasn't that I the did. idea? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. we, we've just become a university and we're just kind of feeling our way, and that's not the feeling around here. Okay. What's different about the faculty uh, who've been hired, let's say in the last five, six years or so in computer science, and the faculty that you were a part of back in the 60s and 70s? Well, 
None of us were trained as computer science okay. right. people. Everybody was trained in mathematics. Right. Oh, yeah. And so we were all, it was fun. We were right. figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. You know, go to a conference, learn something, come home, try to apply it. Um, okay. But people really weren't trained in right. that field. So we were kind of creating the field right. as we went along. Yeah. Now our sure. people are really trained okay. and uh, so they they already, I, I just really like our new people. I mean, they're so up okay. on things. Especially technology. Right. You know, this is a, a kind of a, a oral footnote to the conversation. When math became math and computer science, how did you decide who was going to go with computer science? Was that sort of, you know, raise Each your person, or? right. Each okay. person made a decision. And some people, of course, it was more um, determined because when they were hired, they right. were to teach, they were hired to teach the computer science okay. classes. So you know how you have, right. uh, you're going to hire yeah. somebody, you say, well, you're good in okay. this area, so we'll give you those classes. Oh, okay. So, so it wasn't any big bone of contention. No, either. it was not. The people who were the computer science people knew who they were, right. and so that became the cluster of faculty who were involved in the new mm -hmm. department of computer science. Right. Do you view the changes that have occurred here in your career as uh, positive or negative or maybe a little of both? Hmm, let's see, changes. In my department in particular or in the whole university? Start with the department, then we'll go to a bigger level. Um, oh, it really seems positive to me in my okay. department because uh, it's really good to have those people who were trained okay. from the beginning in computer science right. because then they're they're already so much further beyond right, right. ahead yeah. and can continue from there and really pick up the students. And it's always fun to have new people yeah. that bring in the younger the sure, students, sure. Inc include them more. That's okay. always good. As far as the university, um, where are we going? <laughs> well, we've had, I don't know, I, I think we need to see where our new president is going to take yeah, us. Good and, point. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't really know which way the university is going right at the minute. It seemed like we were really widening out to a more mm -hmm. um, international. Mm -hmm. Well, that was certainly true under President Brown. Now, uh huh. Yeah. That seemed to be the focus, yeah. and now I don't know really what her agenda is. Right. Uh, I, I think that's a, a valid observation. I think that's always what happens when you've had a president for a long period of time, as was mm -hmm. the case with President Worthen, who of course was mm -hmm. in the presidency for 16 years, then the change is dramatic when you have a short-term president. Right. Because really, President Brownell was really only in the office three years because his last year was sort of what I call a search year, right. him getting out and the board appointing a new president. And so now, as we have this interview, it's a period of what I guess we call watchful waiting or mm -hmm. anticipation mm -hmm. to see what the agenda will be for uh, for Dr. Gora, uh, and I, I don't even know myself if that includes uh, emphasis on the international dimension, which was really a, a big thing uh, with President Brown now. Right. With John Worthen, um, I really felt like we were working on technology. Oh yeah. And um, I, I was very pleased that he mm -hmm. included me in some sure. meetings and going to Indianapolis to meet with people. That was really I, I felt really good in an outreach, right. uh, and I really felt like we were going in a technical mm -hmm. direction, um, but now I don't really know where. Well, I think part of it uh, has to do with the fact that there was more money around for most of John's Well, that's correct, too. That's uh, true. I, I hadn't really seen that, but that's yeah, true. I think Blaine mm -hmm. came here, and the budget of the state began to really mm -hmm. drop mm -hmm. significantly. So he had challenges just in getting funding. Right. I think Dr. Gore is going to same, face the same challenge. Right. But for most of the time that John Ruling was president and I was provost, there was a lot more money around here to do mm -hmm. what I used to call good things for good people. Mm -hmm. Because you could find the good people and say, okay, if you've got a good idea, we'll try to find some way to uh, 
to support what you're doing. So I think you're right. I think it's now the institution's in a little bit of a state of flux as far as what it's, uh, what direction it's going to be. Who are some of the people either here or elsewhere? You mentioned Kurt Hab when you were at Burst, who might have had some influence on you, and that could be either positive or negative, <laughs> <laughs> good or ill. Uh. Any mentors that you think of that uh, were individuals who were important in, in your career? Uh, um, Dr. Eichholz, do you know him, of Eichholz, Brumfield and Shanks? No. Uh -uh. Big math education people in the six, 50s, 60s, so he was my high school math teacher. Oh, okay. But he was also, well, mm -hmm. I guess everybody at Burris is part of all things. Yes, right. Um, so he turned out, they made, Addison Wesley, I think, was their publisher, mm -hmm. and they did kindergarten oh, okay. through. Yeah. But he just really turned me on to mathematics. Oh, okay. And he made it so oh, beautiful. Gosh. I mean, I love I should have had him. <laughs> that never happened for me. <laughs> So he was the most uh -huh. important person in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any others when you were in the math department? Uh, you mentioned Earl McKinney hired you. Uh oh, Earl McKinney and uh, Dwayne Deal. Really, the oh, math yeah, yeah. department. Uh, so I don't want this to be in the tape, but just as a personal thing, uh -huh. I was probably the lowest. You know, uh -huh. it was. That was a really bad time yeah, in my life when right. I came here. And people just took me in, and I always had that feeling in the math mm -hmm. department that um, the people were really good and tried to mm -hmm. help one another out. So, um, kind of family ness, I guess. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tony Edmonds and Bruce Gilbert in their history of Wall State talk about that in kind of a John R. Emmons context, that Dr. Emmons saw Ball State as one big family, and he, of course, was the patriarch of this one big family. <laughs> I guess I ask that, and you've already touched on it in terms of your own career here, uh, because the question I would pose to you is, do you think that's been lost in the last decade or so, that it, it's not any longer a place where there's that feeling of Familyness, of collegiality, as we might say it. Okay, I'm trying to think of the new people that we hired. No, I don't think they have that feeling. Okay, why not? Oh, interesting question. Well, because where I see it uh -huh. is when I'm talking about this this feeling that I had. Mm -hmm. It really came at the lunch hour. Oh, okay. Many people came into right. the common lunch room. Yeah. Okay. And there was conversation. Yeah. There was, how are your classes going? I just had yeah. this student that's driving yeah. me crazy. Yeah. What should I do about this? Uh -huh. And there was all this um, equality, mm -hmm. but there was exchange of ideas. I think you could mm -hmm. present this better if you do this or mm -hmm. that or the other thing. Mm -hmm. And these new people aren't coming into the lunchroom. There is a lunchroom there that the math and computer science people share, but I have never seen the new people there. Okay. Because I think that's one of the real changes in, in my own department, in the history department. And, and a lot of people in history of my generation talk about that. And the younger people in history these days sometimes wish they had it, mm -hmm. but because we talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. And they realize, well, gee, maybe that's something that I missed. And so you're saying that math and then later computer science are the same kind of thing. Right. And okay. so I really, in some ways, I feel responsible that I didn't get those people in. Mm -hmm. But I can see that it's possible that they won't stay with us because they don't have them. Fairly typical, I would think, uh, is that you spend some time chairing the department. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like you to talk a little bit about that. Uh, what were your experiences as a department chair? Your, your taste, shall we say, of being a uh, a full-time administrator, at least somebody on a 12-month contract. Did you, did you enjoy that? It was a real challenge for yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, it, I think um, it must have been must be somewhat different for me from a person who campaigned for that or yeah, wanted right. that right. Uh, office that Clinton. Uh, 
called me in. He was very ill. He hadn't been at school. And he said, would I do this? And almost always if Clinton asked me to do something, yeah. I would really try sure, to do it. Sure, sure. Um, and then uh, there is this idea of um, genderism, too. Yeah. So all the women sure. in the department came. We had a meeting. And the women really invited me. And they said, if you do this, we'll really support mm -hmm. you. Okay. So we were really a, a force, I felt. I had the real support of all the women. Oh, that's great, yeah. And then when I had, I became chair, mm -hmm. we had an entirely female front office, yeah. which is very strange <laughs> in computer science. You know, we were the, yeah. there were no other female tenured people in my department. Mm -hmm. I was it, yeah, right. and yet we had this whole, uh, our whole office mm -hmm. was female, and Mary Meadows, who is our right. technical person, is female. Yeah. So um, uh, we did not have a me against them, but right. we really had a feeling, well, we can all work together. Okay. There, so there really wasn't mm -hmm. any, I don't know, it just, mm -hmm. um, Let's see, so part of the time, Norm was our chair. Mm -hmm. um, and the three of us kind of felt like we were working for him. But to me, when I became chair, we were a team. Okay. And we yeah. approached it from that manner. I don't know that they, you know, my other office workers would say <laughs> that, but, uh, yeah. but that's the way I felt. Mm -hmm. We were a team, mm -hmm. and here we go, we're gonna get this work done. Well, the department, I think, made some really significant progress when you were chair. So, I mean, that, that's an important part of your life and the mm -hmm. history of computer science. Mm -hmm. what, what did you think the biggest challenge was when you became the chair? What did you, what did you find most difficult? <laughs> well, I guess personnel. Okay. Uh, yeah. See, and I don't yeah. want to say that in public. Well, I say it all the time in public, and somebody <laughs> asks me. I mean, I, I think the most difficult thing that any chair does, any dean, any provost, anybody in the academic affairs or university, is that you're always going to have to deal with some personnel issues. Yeah. And that's what, I don't know, that's what keeps you up at night. Right. You, know, you spend more time worrying about whether or not you're making the right and fair decision in personnel issues. So if you hadn't said that, I would have asked you about it. <laughs> so that was your biggest challenge. That was the biggest challenge yeah. because everything else you can cope with. <laughs> right? You just do your best. You say, here we're going to go. We're going to yeah. try to get this done. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. fails or doesn't. But this really affects people's lives. Yep. And yep. Yeah, and when you make a decision that someone views as the incorrect decision, uh, then that person always thinks that his or her life has somehow ended. Right. Uh, or, or will be going off in a direction which he and she would not want to see it go. That's right. That's right. It, it's a funny thing to throw at you, but I brought it up with other chairs who retired recently. Did you find the paper burden of being a chair to really be difficult, the amount of paper you have to handle these days? No, cause, as I said, we were a team, and right. my team really helped me with the they paper. <laughs> You can delegate it. <laughs> and um, so I, I'm not a person who is um, an excellent writer. Okay. So I would write right. whatever report, and then I'd take it into yeah. them, and they'd help me out. Okay. okay. Uh, talk a little bit about involvement that you've had, and this could be either you by yourself or you and your husband. Uh, in the Muncie community. What are some of the things during the years you've been here that have been of interest to you in, in the Muncie community? Um, let's see. Well, m my main focus is my church. So right. that's, okay. you know, that's just where I uh, live most of my unschooled yeah. time. Uh -huh. But we also, um, well, I was on the part, the steering committee that started uh, Magna Cum Murder. Mm -hmm. That was sure. really fun. Yeah. We had a lot of fun uh -huh. getting that started. Yeah. Um, let's see what other community things. 
Well, I know Stan's been involved in the Greenway. Has that been something that is of interest to you as well as Stan? Oh, well, I love to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah. So I think we've tried to uh -huh. um, divide up the world, and I take okay. care of the religion, and <laughs> he takes care of the environment. Way to go. Good, co <laughs> good combination. I kind of got this backwards, but I, I neglected to ask if there were any particular service areas within Ball State that you got involved with during the time you were a member of the faculty. I, I was a sponsor for the ACM, which is our little... Every department has a club. Right. Okay. So that was my little group. Okay. Okay. They were. I've had some great kids. Worked with some wonderful kids. Now you mentioned students. Jogs my memory a bit because going back to a question I asked you a few moments ago about changes that have occurred at Ball State during your career. Do you think that the faculty attitude toward working with students is the same now as it was when you came here? that faculty are really concerned about working with their students? Because I think that was really a big thing back in the 60s and 70s, the faculty were very, very much interested in their involvement with students in their classes and even with extracurricular activities. And I don't know what, I don't think that the people that I, in my department, that I work with most of the time are as involved as students okay. as when I first came. But I've also had a lot of chance to work down with the math department. Mm -hmm. And those, I still see that there. Okay. So I don't know that it's, hmm. um, I was on their search committee, the math search committee. Right. So I really was working with those people and listening to them. Uh, sell their department, right. and that, that was the main focus of what they had to say. But I don't think, when I've worked with um, computer science mm -hmm. uh, search committees, that there's as big an emphasis on that. So uh, I think it could be a difference in what kind of people go into computer science. Oh, okay. At a conference that I attended, they were talking about, they had some people who had, I don't know what the, ethnicity. Mm -hmm. So you would go into a, a university and you would go to each department and you would say what the culture of that department oh, okay. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would look at each department as a separate, okay. kind of like oh. Margaret Mead. <laughs> of well, the yeah, it yeah, yeah, is cultural anthropology, sure. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so computer science was the farthest. Mm -hmm. in the entire university, hmm. away from establishing a relationship with students. Oh, okay. So it isn't just, that, that just isn't Ball State, then that's no, national. No, yes. Oh, okay. And I'm, so I'm saying I, yeah. I know that, to, I believe that, at least that was yeah. what was at the conference, to be a universal trait of computer science departments, and it is with us, too. But we still have, you know, everybody sure. has a few good people that are out there. Yeah. That is, that is an interesting observation because I I can see how you could reach that conclusion about almost what has become a stereotype mm -hmm. of computer science professors. Right. This, this is kind of what I call the nerd factor, mm -hmm. that, that these faculty right. are not as interested in being that involved with students. Do you think the fact that we now require so much scholarly productivity for getting tenure and getting promoted, certainly the first promotion to associate professor, that that tends also to take time away from the time that faculty might spend with students. It does, but if you're doing a research that involves, if you can pull the right. students in, yeah. then you can do both things right. at once. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. And, and some computer science yeah. projects work yeah. that way, yeah. so, because that's a nice way to have students work. So it can work. Yeah. Well, what's your view of the the role of the faculty at Ball State? Do you think the faculty have an appropriate voice in decision making, in in the governance of the institution? <laughs> what are we going to do with our new senate? Is it going <laughs> to? I was getting to that. I mean, I, actually, the, the backdrop of this question is that 
we are now on the verge of, some would hope, for the first time in the institution's history, having a faculty voice, mm -hmm. uh, which I always thought was an important thing to have. And yet many faculty felt, well, I think still feel, that the university senate dilutes the faculty voice because you've got administrators and students in there. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really what's behind my asking you the question, you, you know, whether you thought in your career that the faculty had an appropriate voice in the decision-making process of the institution. Well, I'm, I'm anxious to see what the okay. new uh, system is going to, how it's going right. to work out. But I do think we had a voice okay. in this way okay. that people were pretty open to other people talking to them. Right. So I could talk to my chair, right. my chair could talk to my dean, right. I could talk to my dean. I always mm -hmm. felt like I could go and see the dean if there was, well, maybe mm -hmm. I thought that more when I became chair, right? Yeah, right. Right. Maybe I don't remember well, how I felt before that. <laughs> well, I, and I thought your dean, Rob Johnstone, uh, for the record, was a very open, yeah. engaging sort of person, uh -huh. and that he certainly did try as best the dean of a large college could to get as much opinion right. from his chairs, mm -hmm. uh, who he certainly considered to be an outstanding group of people, and so he really valued yeah. their opinion. I think it depends, in that instance, if you have a dean who values the opinion Well, that's of what chairs. I was going to say. I think it goes back to that, um, mm -hmm. I, we maybe called it friendliness or something, yeah. but uh, openness to mm -hmm. hearing what the other people had to say. So we had that in an informal way. But it will be interesting to see as yeah. we have a more formal process yeah. how that works. Do you think that's a good thing to have a faculty senate? Well, yes. I wanted okay. to, I wanted to try it. I wanted to see how. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's time for Ball State to try it. Uh huh. Since the time became a university in the mid-1960s. They've never tried it. Right. So here we are in a new century. <laughs> it's about time, <laughs> I think, to have a to have uh -huh. faculty senate and give the faculty a a more specific opportunity to have a, have a, have a voice. How, how do you view the relationship between the university and the community, what's traditionally called the town and the gown? How, how have you seen that in the years you've been here? I, I think a person who came, but I mean, this was always my life, so I was right. always part of the right. community, yeah. and I, then probably the newer thing for me is to be right. part of the university, although when you're a birth yeah. student, you always think that you're part of the university. Right. Anyway, right. so yeah. <laughs> it was never an issue um, for me. I never felt like somebody rejected, oh, well, let's see. Yeah, you could see maybe that people mm -hmm. treat you differently if they think you're a professor than okay. if you're just Joe Blow. Do you think the town and the gown have worked pretty well together? So it seems to me that they have, but okay. I, you know, I, there's probably a lot going on that I'm not aware. Well, I think it's really a question of perception, where a lot of people I find in the town don't think the university does enough for the community. Being on the other side of it, especially the 15 years I spent as provost, I think the university does a lot for the community. Sure, there's always more that we could do, but I think the contribution that this university makes to the city of Muncie is incredible. Uh, I'd almost be willing to say, I'd hate to think what Muncie would be like. Oh, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't think this would be a good town yeah. without the university. Okay. I mean, we're uh, so one little idea is um, yeah. since I retired, I've joined the community for Center for Vital Aging. Oh yeah, sure, downtown. Yeah. Well, yeah. so they're supported by um, Ball State. Yep. Yeah, that's it. But they're yeah. supporting their the people that they're serving are, uh -huh. is definitely the community. Sure. They're located yeah. in the community. They're not located right. back here at Ball State. Yeah. Yeah. They're a real presence there. What, what do you do down there? Well, I was going to, I'm part of Senior Net. Oh, the computer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. You teach computer classes? Yeah, so if you're over 50, you could come I and could go. I could come, I could go. Well, it's funny enough, I've had, I've had some people in my interviews so far who have said that they go there and that they've learned an awful lot. About oh, great. Computers. And I, my, my gosh, my wife and I may indeed do that. All right, come on down. Sounds like a great opportunity. Do you think that, well, I started to say a few moments ago, do you think this relationship between town and gown has changed over time? I mean, I guess I'm asking you to reflect back on the 1960s and then look fast forward to 2004 and give me a reflection <laughs> about whether or not you think it's, the relationship is better or it's not as good. You know, I just really have no... Okay. It's, 
I was a kid growing up. Yeah. I never, it just all was my town. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're pretty atypical in that regard because you really started out on the town side mm -hmm. and then became part of the gown side. Right. And now, as you mentioned, working downtown in one of Ed Wall's great dreams uh, to have an opportunity to have the old Masonic temple be a, place, yeah, be a place that isn't just a bunch of bricks falling down. Right. It's really, but they've done a beautiful job yeah. of yeah. I don't know how much they had to restore, but the lovely, it really is a good building. Yeah, quite a bit. Was actually. it? Yeah, yeah, probably. It's a good example of having uh, some ball family money available to do things like that. And Ed, because of his contact with Masonic Lodge, was very instrumental in saying that this building should uh, not be allowed to fall into a state uh -huh. of disrepair. Because uh -huh. it was falling into a state of disrepair. Okay, I didn't know that. Now it's it's really making a major contribution. It is. It's to the a great building. Community. Anything else you want to add? Any final reflections <laughs> on a long and terrific career at, uh, at Ball State? Well, it, you know, because I was thinking about this, uh, I was with some women and we were talking about uh, saying when we change the tape, are there any sort of final comments that you want to make about your career here and you started to talk about a situation that occurred when you first started to take class here and I'd like you to reflect on that a little bit. Well, uh, I was uh, in college and I wanted to take some summer school classes here at Ball State and I wrote to my mother and said, sign me up for this math class. So mother went to the chair of the department and asked for me to take this class. And he said, no, she'll never pass it. So mother wrote, no, you can't take the class. I wrote back to my mother, doesn't matter, just sign me up for the class. <laughs> and I was speaking to some women friends, telling, we were talking about how, I, how lives had changed for women. And it occurred to me that at one point, the male chairman of the department wouldn't let me take the class. And eventually, I had been the chair myself. A great career. <laughs> well, it was a big change. Yeah, it was a big change. Thank you very, very much for participating in my project. Oh, yeah.